welcome to my studio, such as it is. Uh, what I want to show you today, I have this great vintage stool that I absolutely love. And I want to, uh, there comes the kitty. There she is, kitty. No, I want to cover this. And I found this really awesome watercolor looking fabric. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's got this really, and since I love watercolor, this is what I'm going to use to cover this. And, but, normally what I would do is <coughs> disassemble this, take this bottom off of here, and staple it all in. But I don't want to mess up the integrity of this great vintage stool. This upholstery, even though it's uh, dated, it's still in good condition. And so I'm just going to leave everything alone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cover and I'm going to put a drawstring on the bottom of it. And so to start off, <coughs> to make my, excuse me, I'm just going to take a piece of paper. This is just a plain, you could use a piece of like newspaper or a couple of pieces of copy paper together. And I'm going to just uh, make me an impression of this circle. And I don't think I'm going to put a cord on this. I think I'm just going to do a, a round seam. To make sure I don't shift out of place here. And so I'm just going to mark this in a couple of places. I could use even a piece of foil to do that. But I'm just going to make the creases in the paper. And then I'll have my round shape. And then I'm going to measure the side. There's, I don't know if you can see the impression in there, but there's a, an impression and I'll transfer that. And then I'm just going to measure this depth right here and add a couple of inches onto it and put a drawstring in there and uh, stitch this together. So uh, don't go away. Well, let's get this done. I made an impression of my uh, bar stool seat on this paper and you can kind of see the creases. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my pencil and go along the impression that I made and I need to add my seam allowance. So I'm going to add a half an inch. Right now, this is just the original line and I did measure that my uh, side pieces, the finished size is three inches wide by 43 inches around. All right, and so I'm gonna add extra to that and I'm gonna go ahead and add my half inch and I could probably put my ruler on here and measure this but I'm pretty good at eyeballing. I have sewed for so many years that I'm, we'll just kind of put a little t measure on here and see what I've done with this and see if this is pretty, pretty accurate. Let's see. There is two, there's my half inch mark and there's my two inch mark. So I'm going to do that all the way around and then I'm going to cut this out and then I will uh, figure out where I want to put it on my piece of fabric. I bought a little over a yard of this fabric, maybe a yard and a half, and it is, it even says that it's marble multi Hobby Lobby stores. So this is a Hobby Lobby fabric and I know that my piece needs to be 43. This is actually 44, so I have a one inch allowed for a seam that's a half an inch on each side that just works out really well um, so I can do this all in one strip here uh, with the widthwise of the fabric the crosswise of the fabric now then I want to I know that I need it three inches wide and a half an inch of a seam uh, top and bottom and I want a little bit of a a sleeve area a turnover area where I can put like a shoestring or a drawstring of some sort so I think I'm actually going, it's going to be three inches finished, an inch uh, for both of the seam allowances, half and half. So that's going to take me to four and then five. So I think I'm going to cut it six inches. So I've got my, uh, just my clear plastic piece of plexiglass and six inches on this side and that side. And hold that, got my rotary cutter. Keep my fingers and thumbs out of the way. Shift so that doesn't shift on me. 
All right. Now then, in my uh, studio, I have quite a bit, like my, my filing cabinet is red, and I've got a, another little red stool. Now, this doesn't really have red in it, but it has like some orangey colors. And uh, so I think, I'm like, where do I want the middle of this seat part to be? That is like too pinky for me. I kind of like this streak of orange here. There's a streak of orange right there. Uh, I think I'll just go into that area there and just a couple of pins. Before we go to the sewing machine, I want to do a couple of more things. I want to fold this in half and fold it in half again. And I want to put pins here, here in each of these quarters. And this will help me to make sure that I have my, so I've got two pins here and then I want to do Pins in this halfway part. One here. I'm trying to make sure I don't catch through both layers. And one here. Now then, after I seam this together, I'm going to go ahead and mark the same way. I'm going to mark... Actually, I can do it before I seam because I know I'm going to have a half inch seam allowance. And I could use a tape measure to do this, but I'm not going to. So this is going to be my halfway mark. So I'm going to put a pin here. Now this one had four pins, but this one will only have three pins and a seam. I hope that makes sense. It will in a second. All right, so there's that one. Now I'm going to back off for my seam allowance right here. I'm going to allow me, a, and there's a, there's a half inch mark right there on my cutting board. So there's a half inch right there. And then I'm going to put two pins. Now you could mark this with something else besides pins. You don't have to use pins. You could like use a little pencil mark or something like that. There. And there. So I've got, this is going to be a half inch seam here on this end, right there. And then I've got at quarter of the way, marked with pins front and back, on both sides, I mean, not front and back, and then at my halfway point. Now, I'm going to the sewing machine. Okay, I went to the sewing machine and I did a half inch seam, just a straight stitch, and I left this open at the bottom, and I'm gonna make, this is where my casing is going to be, so I'm gonna do that next, uh, and, then I, and then I'll come back and put the circle part of this on. Okay, to make my casing, what I've done is I have turned it under three-fourths of an inch, and, uh, and I could use my serger, but I'm not going to just in case you don't have a serger and you want to follow these instructions. Now, at my seam, that's the, the main joining seam, fold this seam allowance under, and then I'm going to bring this down also three-fourths of an inch, so I'm going to have a little bit of an opening right there, put a little pin there, and I'm going to come back, let me do it on both sides. So I'm pinning, I'm going to turn this under, like that, and then I'm coming down three-fourths of an inch. Actually, I'm going to just even this up with this side right here. There we go. And then to stitch this, I'm just going to barely turn under a little tiny seam, about like that. That's going to leave me enough room for to run a shoestring or a cord or something through there that's going to... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that's going to hold my, uh, going to gather it up to hold it onto the uh, stool. So, let's get this over here. We're just going to use a straight stitch. Move this pin just a tiny bit so I can turn this under to get started. There we go.
stool from the bottom and I could have unscrewed this these screws and uh, removed this cover taken the stool the seat off and then recovered it that way but I just didn't want to do that I didn't want to mess with the original cover that was on there in who knows for what reason but I'm just going to put a piece of cord in here and draw this up and then secure it that way to the stool I've cut me some cord <clears throat> excuse me like so I need this doubled because this is fabric is doubled so there's doubled and then some extra for tying a knot and running it through so I'm going to run this through I've used just a big safety pin it's not one of those that I rusted in my other video and I'm just going to feed this through this much left over for tying that off so that's going to be good so the next thing this is where my pins and the seam are going to come in handy so I'm going to show you how to do this All right, right sides together open up my seam and that one's going to go right there in this space I'm going to go ahead and put two pins just to hold that seam open then the middle one again right sides together I'm going to come right straight across and the middle pins are going to go here pin that secure it good and that's divided into quarters both pieces are divided into quarters so we're going to match up the pins on this side And there. Okay, so this is what's going to feed into uh, the sides. Okay, so we'll round that off and feed that on in. And I'm going to start from my seam, not for any other reason other than I'm just going to, and go ahead and get those uh, out of the way. And I'm putting my circle side up. I'm going to do a half inch seam. After I adjust this, I may need to, after I try it on, I may need to decide that it needs a little bit more than a half inch, but we're going to see. So, get this started. Let's see how this fits, and uh, if it fits really good, I may just come back and do one more reinforcing stitch on that. Well, I am pretty happy with the way that this looks, and that looks like a good fit. But the other thing that I'm going to do, I have some uh, low loft quilt batting, and I've got like four layers of it, and I cut it just a little bit larger than the pattern that I used for the uh, the top part of the seat. And so I'm going to put that on the seat and then put the cover over it, kind of soften the edges because this surface is kind of hard because it's the original surface. So let me put my camera back on the stand and see what we can do. So because my chair is old and it's kind of slick and a little stiff, I got the, the quilt batting and I went ahead and pinned this in just a couple of places so whenever I put it over here on the stool, it won't shift around on me. So let's move the camera tripod. 
So sometimes you have to convince your project or yourself that you are smarter than your project. So put this over so I can make sure I have all of my batting pulled up. And then this is even. Kind of adjust this around a little bit. Get that little fullness pulled out. There we go. All right, now I think I'm ready to pull this together. Get it all together. And I hope that this is going to turn out the way that I have pictured in my mind that it will be. That's recording now. So I've got it all adjusted. I think that that's going to work. And uh, my daughter-in-law just came in. And so I'm going to get her, I'm going to recruit her to put her finger right here so I can tie a good knot. So stick your finger right there in that spot. Okay, slide out. Uh, cut your circulation off. All right, I'm going to do one more. Don't need a... Don't need an extra finger right there. Awesome. That'll work. All right, let's trim that off and see how that looks. So what we've done is we have, without damaging the original seat, we've recovered this really cute vintage stool with this really cool watercolor print. Okay guys, here it is back in the studio. I'm so excited with the way that this turned out. I didn't have to mess up my really cool vintage stool. I just put this cover on it. So, you know the drill. If you like this video, you got something out of it, subscribe, give me a little thumbs up, hop over to myhallcloset.com, my blog, and subscribe over there for some of my free goodies. And I will see you next time. Bye.